All right, so we're doing another uh, graph theory proof. This one is about Hamiltonian cycles, right? So just a, a refresher, basically a Hamiltonian cycle. Um, well, well, first of all, a Hamiltonian path is basically where uh, is basically where you start on one vertex of the graph and you traverse the graph so that you touch every vertex exactly one time, and then you go back to the original vertex, right? Um, I'm sorry, that's a Hamiltonian cycle. Hamiltonian path just simply means that you start at one vertex and you traverse through all the vertexes of the graph um, and you don't and you don't return to the original vertex, right? You just, you know, you just touch all the vertices exactly once and there's like a path where you do that, basically. Um, so this proof basically says that we have a graph and it has, it has at least three vertices, right? And so the idea here is that there are, so it's basically saying that if it's true that for any pair of non-adjacent vertices, right? So let's say a vertex X and another vertex Y, they're not connected to each other, um, like directly. Um, and then it says that if this equation is true for those, for any two vertices that are not adjacent, then the graph is Hamiltonian. So we want to prove this, right? So Hamiltonian just means that the graph has a Hamiltonian cycle, okay? So what we have to do is that we have to use a contradiction, uh, a proof by contradiction, and basically assume that the negation of this thing is true, um, and then show why it's uh, why it doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's assume. So so contradiction. Okay. So let's assume that there is a graph out there, right? You know, it has that property, right? So there's a graph graph out there um, with with its vertices, with at least three vertices. And in that for all the non-adjacent vertices, right, in X, in, in G, so this would be like, Y, and, and G is not Hamiltonian, right? So we're just gonna assume that the opposite of this is true, and we're gonna show why it's a contradiction. So basically, we start off with G. So G just has three vertices, um, and basically, uh, <laughs> sorry. So this is supposed to be greater than or equal to n, right? N is going to be, you know, whatever how many vertices we have. So it's just n, okay? So first of all, let's just say we start off with this G. Let's say we had, let's say another graph, right? Um, and let's say what we did was that with G, let's say we just simply add a bunch of edges to G in such a way so that if we were to add another edge to it then it would actually create a Hamiltonian cycle, okay? So let me just write down where. So let's say we have, let's have a G prime such that, uh, let's have G prime such that uh, adding any, uh, any more edges edges to G prime would create a Hamiltonian cycle. A Hamilton cycle. All right, so basically what we're doing is that we start off with the G that, that we have, right, whatever it is, and let's say we just add a bunch of edges to it in such a way so that we get G prime, and what makes G prime special is that if you were to add just one more edge to it, it would create a Hamiltonian cycle, okay? Now what this means is that if we had, if we were to add one more edge, we would have a Hamiltonian cycle, right? But that would also mean that what we have right now, it's a very close to a Hamiltonian cycle. So what we must have is a Hamiltonian path. Okay. So, so G prime has a Hamilton path, right? And you can write this out, right? So you can say, for example, let's say it starts at X, and then let's say it goes to B two. V3, and then it just keeps on going, right, right? So, and then eventually it gets to uh, Y, right? Which is the final vertex of the Hamilton path, right? So that's what this G prime has, right? Um, and also we're gonna add in something else to this, which is also gonna help us with the contradiction. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say we say this, right? Let's say for, um, and also let's just add a little bit more to it. So let's say we had um, V uh, I minus one, um, V, I, and then we just kept going until we get to Y, basically, right? So it's just, it keeps going like this, right? I is just a number, right? Um, so basically what I'm trying to do is I want to basically say this. I want to say 
for i greater than or equal to 2. Okay. Um, if x is, so let's say if x vi, right, so this is an edge, basically. So this means that if x is adjacent to a vertex vi, if this is if this is the case, if that's actually a part, if that's actually an edge in the graph g prime, then that means that the edge y vi minus one is not an edge in or in our graph. Or in other words, that y and vi minus one, those two vertices cannot be adjacent to each other. And the reason why is because if you write this out, let's say if you had like this vertex was x and then this vertex was v2, and this vertex was whatever, right? You just kept going, and then you got to y, right? Well, here's the thing. Let's say you had this Hamilton path, right? This is just a rough sketch of what it looks like, right? So it goes from here to here, um, all this stuff, right? So it's gonna traverse through all the vertices of the graph, right? But the, the problem is, is that, let's say if we had an edge, let, let's say like this, right? So an edge that connects from x to vi, and let's say you also had an edge that also connected from y to vi minus one, right? The reason why, you know, I'm writing it as like with dotted lines because I don't wanna like say that this is what we have because I'm saying that it can't happen, right? So the idea is, is that let's say if I wanted to have a Hamiltonian cycle, which by the way, we can't have that because we assume that that's not happening, right? Um, but the idea is that if we were to add, let's say uh, an edge so that it connects y uh, in vi minus one, then what you could have is you could go from x to vi and then keep going through the path until you get to y and then just traverse back, back to here and then go all the way back and get back to x again, right? So that'll be a Hamilton cycle. So that's why, of course, obviously x can connect to any other vertex. That, that doesn't matter, right? The point is, is that you can't have, you know, y connecting to the vertex loop right before this guy because then you could just easily do a Hamilton cycle just like this, then you go up back to y, down here right before vi, and then just go back to x, right? That's a Hamilton cycle, that would be a contradiction. So that has to be impossible, right? So that's why we're assuming that this has to be the case, okay? Okay, so if that's the case, then with this stuff in mind, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create an equation that's going to contradict the equation that we assumed all the way back here, right? So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we know that the degree of y, okay, Okay, so this, so the degree of y has to be less than or equal to n minus one, right? And this is true for any vertex in a simple graph, right? Obviously, y is not gonna be adjacent to itself because there are no loops here. Um, and the maximum amount of vertexes you, you can have, well, the maximum degree I'm trying to say for any vertex in a simple graph is going to be the amount of vertices there are minus one, right? Because minus one means basically like, you know, you're not gonna be adjacent to yourself, right? That's the idea. Okay, so this makes sense, right? This is true even for x, even for v2 or and all these other vertices, right? But the problem is, is that we also have to subtract the degree of x, okay? Because for every extra vertex that x connects to, that's another vertex that y cannot connect to, right? Because think about it, if I, let's say if x was adjacent to vi, then that means, you know, okay, y cannot, obviously it cannot be connected straight to x, right? Because that wouldn't make sense, right? You would have a Hamilton cycle. But also if it, y connected to vi minus one, that's also not good because then you would also have a Hamilton cycle as well, right? And let's say if, let's say if uh, x was connected to uh, v3, right? I'm just making up three, v3 as an example. Then let's say if y was connected to v2, that's also a Hamilton cycle as well, right? But again, these things can't happen because we assume there's no Hamilton cycle. So the idea is, is that let's say if there were three vertices that x was connected to, v2, v3, and, and some other number of vi, then that means there's, um, obviously y cannot connect to x, so that's one vertex can't connect to. It can't connect to vi minus one, it can't connect to, um, okay, it connects to v3. It cannot connect to uh, v2 either, right? So that's already three vertices that it cannot connect to, and interestingly enough, that three is also the degree of x right now, right? If, if it's connected to v2, v3, and then vi, right? So the degree of x tells you the amount of vertices, well, the extra amount of vertices that x cannot connect, that, x, that y cannot connect to, that's what I'm trying to say. So we also consider the degree of x as basically another thing that, you know, limits the degree of, of y, right? That's basically what I'm trying to say. Um, and then uh, let's say we do something interesting here. Let's say if we were to add this other guy to the other side, we would have degree of x plus the degree of y 
is less than or equal to n minus 1. This is our contradiction right here. The reason why it's our contradiction is because we already said previously that we assume that the degree of x plus the degree of y is greater than or equal to n, right? The n is the number of vertices, right? But then somehow we were able to derive that the de that degree of x plus the degree of y is less than or equal to n minus 1, right? That's a contradiction. That makes no sense, right? Regardless of what degree of x plus degree of y equals to, it doesn't matter because let's say n was, I don't know, 3, right? Um, you know, this wouldn't make any sense. This would be 2. So th whatever this number is, it's less than 2, and it's also... Um, you know, less than 2 and it's also greater than 2. Like, how does that make sense, right? So so that's a contradiction, right? So we are able to derive this and this at the same time. That contradicts. And so therefore, um, uh, the assumption was false. And so that means that this proposition uh, is true. And we're done.